So we're going to talk about the uh, dorsal aspect of our wrist joint. So I'm going to run through the extensor tendon compartments of the dorsal wrist. So we'll start with compartment one so on our radial aspect. So we're just coming from our lateral radius onto our styloid and we've got our extensor compartment one there being held down by that retinacular. So we have uh, adductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. As we roll around, we fall into compartment two. So we have our listus tubercle sitting here, our compartment two just sits on the lateral side, and that's our extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. As we move over to the other side of our listus tubercle, we come onto our extensor pollicis longus, which runs down over the top of our compartment two tendons towards the thumb. If we follow our compartment two tendons up the wrist, up the forearm, we have our compartment one tendons crossing those. So we can see those tendons crossing over the top. This is where we might get our intersection syndrome in our rowers or our racket sports athletes. So as we come down again, we can see our listus tubercle as our landmark and we'll just drop the wrist flat. So we move over from compartment three to compartment four, which consists of our extensor digiti communis and our extensor indices running through there as well. We can see our extensor indices coming up and under our extensor digiti communis there. As we move over to extensor compartment five, we have our extensor digiti minimi running through there. And as you continue on over, we see our extensor carpi ulnaris running through, sitting in its subsheath there and over in the groove there up through the muscle. Right next to that is our distal radial ulnar joint we can see there. So that's our distal radial ulnar joint as we just fall off our ulnar there, we're off it. So coming back across, we're gonna have a look at our scapholunate ligament. And the, the landmark we want for that is our Lister's tubercle. So we're gonna find our Lister's tubercle, put our probe on, and then we're just gonna fall off that distally and we will have our scaphoid and lunate there. As you can see, I've, I'm a little off plane, we've got an isotropy, so I'm just gonna roll around so I can be perpendicular to that ligament. We can see that ligament sitting between the bo two bones there. To stress that, we can radial and then ulna deviate to stress it out. We can see that nice intact ligament across there. So that's our scaphoelunate ligament. And this is also a really common spot just here underneath our extensor digit communis compartment four tendons. It's a very common spot for our dorsal ganglions. So we wanna just assess up through there. Now, um, some uh, injection technique. So let's start with our de Quer veins and our compartment one tendons. I'll just get a little bit more gel here. So sitting next to our compartment one tendons is our radial artery and our superficial radial nerve. And these are two structures we wanna be aware of when we're injecting. So I can see just on the volar side, our artery and a little nerve sitting just above that. We've got our tendons there just sitting up over the bone. And we've also got a little bit of nerve just rolling over the tendons there. So these are our little structures we wanna be aware of. But what we do is we find a, a nice plane to get into the tendon sheath, move it across to one side. We just come down half a centimeter and straight in and guide it in. And these tendons, they can sit in separate sheaths also. So we wanna be aware when we're injecting that, we, that, fluid, that the injectate is flowing around both tendons. So that's our compartment one tendons with our distal radial ulnar joint injections. We again, radius and ulna, sliding down till we come to that joint line, moving across, and we can just simply drop down onto the cartilage and inject. So it's just a simple approach down onto the cartilage there. Our wrist joint injections, 
One little trick for that is we can just get a little bit more flexion of the wrist. So we're just going to roll you over and that will just open up our joint nicely. Again, on the radius, move our probe down and we can see there we've got our joint line there come off just so we're off the tendon and we can just needle in and guide it down into the joint there. So that's our wrist joint injection. So that's our dorsal wrist, our, our joints and tendons.